because you never know when we're going to have to break it out. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> All right. People of Earth, I have traveled to outer space and returned to Earth with one of the first families of Electro. Please introduce yourself, starting with the lovely, lovely Lady E. I'm Lady E from Nucleus. Cosmo D. DJ Dog Train, on the way. That's right. Welcome to part one of our Nucleus interview. I know y'all in the UK are losing your minds right now because these are your heroes. So let's get to it right away. Long before you got a chance to record, you were doing black parties in Brooklyn. Yeah, um, started DJing in the 75, for real, earnestly in 76. Um, and in 77, basically, because I first, uh, first started um, with myself and my cousins, Monique and Pete. Okay. And in 77, Monique went to, went to college, so we wanted somebody to replace her. We got my best friend, Dave. And that's, that's about the time we all took, took on the name Jam On Productions. Dave had a um, crew, he was spinning with my boy T. That's Al T, who ended up going on to be head of A&R Warlock and signing the Jungle Brothers and all that, but... Who's uh, in the house? Who's in the house? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but um, he, he, he was too young. He was younger than us, so we, we, we got Dave to split off and leave him flat, okay. leave him out, and Dave joined up. And it was me, Dave, and Pete. I was Cosmo D. Dave was Dr. Freeze, and Pete was Master Quadro. Right. And our group was Jam On Productions. And um, we were doing house parties and all that, but at the time, people were rocking parks, so we started putting together equipment, and we started rocking parks and block parties and getting out there. And what type of equipment? Tell me about your first piece. and what, what, oh, what? Oh. The first piece, <laughs> um, well, the, our, first, our first speakers for, for rocking mm -hmm. were homemade. Well, we we had a um a, a friend of ours whose father built speakers for for like you know West Indian you know big West Indian crews and okay. shit like that. So can I curse? Like, yeah, yeah, of course. I guess I just did, right? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so um he, you know we paid him and he built some big coffin speakers for us. They weren't great, but um, they were enough that we could start rocking outside with you know. So we had our big coffins. And um, I don't even remember what drivers he put in there. Um, there were some cheap drivers. But, it, you know, we started out in Electro Voice. Um, no, not Electro Voice. What was it? Uh, uh, no, 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 no. Craft, sound craftsmen. Okay. Sound craftsmen amplifiers. Oh, Them things that got hot, they burst into flames, man. <laughs> it, was, it was amazing. But um, yeah, that's what we started out and um, making digital beats. You're gonna need some equipment. What what were those essential pieces of equipment that you first started to get your sound from? Um, you talking about music wise? Yes. When we were making music, yes. When, when we first started, this is years later. When we first started um, actually making music, um, I went out and I bought something by Electro Harmonics. It was a little plastic and cardboard synthesizer, little model synthesizer. Didn't even have real keys, had membrane keys. You know, so the keys were flat, you know, and they just colored, and you know, you press on the keys and it was, you know, touch sensitive circuits in there. You know, no like velocity, or nothing like that. Seriously. Something like that. It, 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 price could have made a Yeah, it, it, it was a step above a toy, but it was a real synthesizer. Okay. You know, a hundred something dollars. I was a, I was a, working in a, in a mail room, so it was what I could afford. Spent my whole paycheck on that, right? You know, but um, got home and that same night, me and me and lady we made a made a song, you know. And I knew nothing about music, didn't know an A from an E to a C or anything like that. I had been in a couple of bands before and I tried to play guitar, but I had never played keyboards, you know. But um, first night we made the song called Now Before and Evermore. And if I could find that tape, man, we oh lost that tape. But that, that, oh. it, it, we, I mean, you couldn't tell us that we knew we were dope. <laughs> you know, that, that first night, that was um, either late 79 or, 19, or early 1980. Wow. And um, 
Your first recordings were in '81, right? When you um, first started to really lay it down? When we, f when we first started doing real multi-tracks was 81. Okay. But we started, it, it, was, it was either the end of 79 or early 1980 that we actually first started making music. And what I would do then is I'd take two tape decks, I'd record something on one tape deck, then I'd play that tape deck back and record it through the mixer to another tape deck and play something at the same time and layer it like that. So what you ended up with after about five passes was something really noisy, but basically multi-track all squeezed on, you know, some tape on tape stuff, you know. And um, we actually went out and, and shot a demo called Freak City Rapid that was made with that oh, technique. That was fun. It's it's up oh, on our website God, too. Great song. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And um, um, what's the website? jamonproductions.com there's your link right there boom <laughs> <laughs> you know but um it, it, you know we were doing tape to tape stuff you know and um what happened basically since we're here you know i might as well tell the story of how nucleus because at that time it was basically me doing the music and lady e was you know you know we were we were married by that time. No, we weren't married yet. By Nucleus? No, no. By, by when we were doing the first stuff, the tape to tape, we weren't married. Right. We was just, we were still going, we were just going out. Mm -hmm. And um, Al T, again, mm -hmm. <laughs> he, he, he was down with us, but everybody else basically would come in, you know, you know, jam on, jam on and do backgrounds and stuff like that. You know, but we were basically sh shopping as the Jam On Crew or Freak City Disco, which was our business name at the time. Okay. But um, I realized I, I, I had bought um, an 808. I had bought a, an, an electro... Uh, um, 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 what's the name of the company? Wow, why am I drawing a blank? Um, Wow, it was a pro one. I, I don't be, I don't believe I'm forgetting that I'm drawing a blank on the name. It was a sequential soft? circuits. A oh. sequential circuits pro one and uh, uh, an 808. Did I have the 303 yet? Yeah, I had the 303 and I had a, a electro harmonics Vakoda. Okay. And I was doing tape to tape stuff with this stuff, but um but I needed some multi track and you know Tascam had the very first Porter Studio then. It was a, um, a little board that recorded four tracks to cassette, you know, and I didn't have the money, but my cousin Neek did. So I asked her to, to, to um, lend me the money to get it. And I told her, you know, I, I know this music is going to happen. You know, this music is going to happen. I know it. So I promise you, you know, I'll pay you back and all this and all that. She said, all right, fine, but do me a favor. Will you bring in Bob? Bob was Chili B. Exactly. Now Bob and I had played together in a band. In a band, we lived on the same block in Bed Stuy, in Bay Ridge. Okay. Um, Bob and I had set, played in a band a few years earlier called um, Thunder Funk. He was the bass player, and I was a singer. You know, it was a, 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 a funk rock band. Okay. You know, so you know, I knew he could play. Mm -hmm. You know, I knew he was musically inclined. I also knew he was a rival DJ. He was DJing at the time, you know, and I was DJing. You know, but we were cool. So I said, okay, yeah, no problem. So she wasn't just asking you to take on a nobody. She was take, asking you to take right, on somebody. Right, yeah, because they were going out. Yeah, her time. boyfriend. Yeah, she was, <laughs> he was her boyfriend the same yeah. time as we were boyfriend and girlfriend. So I said, okay, so we got together. And just like the first night with, 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 with Lady E, me, me and Chili B, first night together, we did a song called Until the Morning. And that's because we, we sat there and worked on it until the morning the song was dope. Oh, wow. It was just magic working together. Amazing. You know, so um, that was basically how all of a sudden it became it became me and me and Chili B working together. Now is this Positive Messenger? It, we took on the name Positive Messenger. We started um, working a, a, you know, as a group. Okay. You know, and brought in Lady E and and, and, and Neek. Right. You know, as, as, as to do vocals and Chili B and I did all the all the all the right. instruments, you know, all the music and putting that together. And eventually, we wanted a name, you know. And I wanted the name Messenger, you know, spelled of course because I spell everything it's funny. Like M E S Z E N G E R. Okay. 
I said, hey, hey, Chili B said, well, why you want that name? I said, because it's positive. So well, why don't we just use the name positive? So as a compromise, okay. he became positive messenger. All right. You know, and at that time, you know, we were still, we, 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 we had, um, once I started working with him, um, we had started because we were blown away. We, f we were blown away by the music we were doing. And we figured the music we were doing was a blessing from God, and we would do our best to answer that blessing by doing music with a purpose. Okay. So everything that we were doing at that point had to, had to be something about, you know, teaching about the world, teaching a lesson, pointing things out, you know, what's wrong with the world, pointing out, you know, the world needs love, or, you know, talking about God or, 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 or Christ or any, anything. It had to have a message. We weren't, weren't doing party records. We were doing records that, that they had, uh, had a message to them. And I mean, what is an artist's job? Not to just, I'm going to be an artist so that I can get famous. It's because I have something to say and contribute it to the world. Exactly. Look at this and tell me what you think. Exactly. And, 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 I, and I know a lot of people, and I don't blame people that may not think that way, but um, I had never had a keyboard lesson in my life. You know? Chili B had taught himself, he had some help from a couple of people, but taught himself how to play bass, you know, and here we were, we were making some fantastic music, plus we, we figured we were living in a blessed time, because we didn't need a drummer, and I had been right. in a few bands, and let me tell you something, bands usually break up because of the drummer, <laughs> so we, we, had, we had a drum machine, you know, we had all these, we were able to do electronic music which we were into at the time right. you know with, with with the 303 we were doing things with the 303 everybody was using 303 for bass we used it for bass but we used it for other things too you know so and, and the, the sequence on the on the pro one so we we were really feeling blessed by 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 you know everything coming together so we figured we had to answer you know why waste those blessings so that's what we were about with the positive messenger thing and who were your electronic influences? We talked a little bit before we started on the camera. Right. Um, Gary Newman, um, Jean-Michel Jarre, Kraftwerk, Devo. Robert Palmer. Robert Palmer, yep. Yeah, Mag yeah Magic Orchestra. Well, we weren't influenced by them. We liked that we played that one record, but they weren't somebody, you see. Computer he wouldn't games. know he wasn't born. <laughs> <laughs> you know, so that they just had the one record that, as a matter of fact, is still the one record I ever heard. But I wouldn't call them an influence because we weren't listening to entire albums by them. Right. But um, all these these other Giorgio, wow. oh my wow. God, wow. I love Giorgio. Giorgio. Together in Electric Dreams. Yeah. Oh, no. oh, it, this is wow. even before oh, that. Yeah. 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 We, 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 from Ooh. here to eternity, yeah. and energy equals MC Square. Wow. You know, we were we were into all that. Um, 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 Don Ray, another one. Um, you know this song, um, 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 Standing in the Rain? Yes. The leaves are falling, the, the sequences on that are dope. You know, so we, we were into all of that electronic stuff. Well, you said Sarone. Did you mention you never Well, Sarone, you Sarone wasn't electronic. You know, Don Ray, who worked with him, put a yeah, little bit in there. He was along with the Alec Constant, Constantinos. Constantinos, yeah. Const Constantinos, that's yeah. what I meant. It looks like we're running out of time, so <laughs> ladies and gentlemen, we'll be right back with part two of the interview with the, one Woo! of the first families Woo! of Electro. Woo! That's 15 minutes already? 